Okay, everyone, it is getting close to swarm season. Um, actually, you can see it's raining right now. You can see my, my dirty garage and saws everywhere. Um, but after this rain ends in a few days, it's supposed to get really warm, really bright and sunny. Um, hives are building up, and it's probably going to be swarm time come this weekend. So I'm going to show you how to build some swarm traps. Uh, you can put any box outside that you want to try to catch a swarm in. But the way I'm going to show you to do it, it's going to up your chances of catching a swarm um, using you know, ideal sizes and volumes and boxes and entrances. And I'll show you how to bait them also. You know, I am an all medium keeper now, but I've got some deeps left around. I think I have three of them that I just never got around to cutting the bottoms off and making them into mediums. So these deeps are going to be the perfect size for a swarm trap. I am going to put medium frames in them though, so I can just swap them out. Um, so I'm going to show you the steps of how to do this. I'm not going to show you how to make all the cuts because if you're not a woodworker, I don't want you to lose a finger thinking it looks easier than it is, but I'll show you what it looks like along the way. First off, you want to use an old used box if you have one available. I haven't used this box in years. This is from my first couple years of beekeeping. You can see there's a lot of good propolis built up and bee smells and it's, it doesn't smell like brand spanking new wood. It's got old paint on it that's not going to off gas. We're going to use, we're going to use these. Um, I don't have enough old tops laying around to attach to these. So what I did was I went to the uh, local lumber shop, lumber store, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever you have. And I bought a 4 by 8 sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood. Uh, normally I would just bring it home and rip it, but since there's just not enough room with all my junk in the garage right now, I had them go ahead and break it down into two by two squares just so it was easier to throw in my truck and bring in here and take up less room. And then I'm going to put them up here and I'm going to mark and I'm going to cut them down to size. I'll waste a little bit of material, but I do have some other things I can do with it. And uh, you know, if you're cutting at home, you, you, you can make the most efficient cuts that you can and save you some bigger pieces, but I'm not really worried about it in this case. So I'm going to put a piece up here underneath this box. We're going to draw a line, mark it, and cut it down. So I'm marking for the bottom right now. Just line up two corners. Get it nice and flush as best you can. And if you built a box that wasn't perfectly square, now's where you're going to see it. So that's why to do this, I put it on the wood and I drew a line to match. That way if my box is off a little bit, I'll make sure to cover up everything really well. So I'm just going to take this and take a handsaw, a little circular saw, and uh, slice off the excess. Now to make the top, <clears throat> the way I'm doing it, I want to leave a little bit of an overhang on three sides. That way when I put the vent holes in, it'll help just keep a little bit more water out of them. So I've got a one inch lip on the back, on the front. And since these are already cut down, just to save from having to make another cut, I leave a longer uh, overhang on the porch. That way, you know this is upside down, so when there's an entrance in it, uh, the bees can congregate on the front and stay out of the rain. Or stay in the shade if it gets a little hotter in the afternoon. If they, if they get so big they need to get them in the beard. And on this side, see where I made my one wrong line? I forgot and made an overhang, but I can't have an overhang, it has to be flush. Because on one side I'm gonna put my board attached to it to hang it from the tree. So one side has to be flush. And I'm gonna make those cuts. What we're gonna do next, we need to put some type of a filler piece in here to be able to screw the top and bottom into. And you don't wanna to try to screw it into this rabbit and bust it. And this is barely even three quarter. You really don't want to try to run down the center of that and split your boxes out. So we're going to put some support pieces in the corners. Um, usually I'd use like a two by two, you know, square piece. But uh, I don't really feel like getting table saw out to rip down wood. I have some two by fours here. So I'll probably just cut strips and put two by fours in. Because what's going to happen is your block of wood's going to go here. It's two inches wide. And you're going to have this two inch wide open channel all the way down it anyhow. So whether this is two or four inches wide this direction, it really doesn't matter. And it's just a lot simpler, especially if you're in your home garage and you don't have the ever equipment to cut it down or you didn't find the right size of wood that you need. Um, you know, this, this whole video is to show you how to do it with the minimal amount of tools and the minimal amount of space. Now, if you have a bigger shop, you're going to do it a little bit differently. But we're going to do it just, you know, the hobby way, especially if you haven't gotten bees yet or you've only, you have one or two hives and you just want to slap some of these together real fast. This is a real quick way to do it. So let's go find that uh, two by four, let's cut some up. When we do, we just need to measure from here 
to the very top of this. We're not going to put a spacer or anything in between it. It's going to be just like a migratory wood. So we need this exact height for whatever box you're going to use for your trap. In case you're curious, you can get, using a deep box, you know, 9 and 5 eighths tall box, you can get nine of these blocks that go in the corners out of an eight foot stick of lumber with just a little, little scrap on the end. So whether it's a two by two, two by four, whatever you're using, you can figure to get two boxes worth plus one extra piece out of every eight foot stick when you're building uh, storm traps and mats. So I'm gonna get a saw set up and start making all these cuts after I mark the next stick as well. I thought I'd go ahead and tell you, um, you can make the two by four cuts with a hand you know, a skill saw, but uh, since I have the luxury of having other saws here, uh, I'm gonna go this route and you know, cut through to make it a lot quicker than trying to do it by hand and keep everything square. But you don't have to use one if you don't have it. Just uh, use what you use what you've got. If you have to, I mean, if it comes down, you have to do it by hand with an actual miter box. You can just uh, get some smaller material, like a two by two square. Um, don't get a two by four and try to hand cut through all that for no reason. Like I said, just use whatever you have around your, your own place. If you, do, if you do have the luxury of having a saw, especially if you have one with a laser guide, make sure to cut right on those lines. That way all your pieces are the same and you're not shortchanging some. I just forgot to show you that while we go. Right, we're back at it now. Uh, we got all of our pieces cut, everything's cleaned up. There's all our little filler blocks. So what you're gonna do is, see that one came out a little bit short, but it's all right. You're gonna come inside your, your boxes going to take some good glue, not cheap, I mean good glue, glue two sides, stick them in, and then you can nail or screw them in however you want to do it, um, but you're going to attach them from the outside, and then what we're going to do after all four of those are attached, you're going to come through, and on your tops and your bottoms, that's where your screws are going to go through, so you're going to pre-drill and then you're going to run a screw right down through each corner essentially each corner, into this block. And this is what your top, your lids get screwed into. And uh, same for the top and bottom. The top ones, you want to put a little silicone over the top of the screw head just to seal it up. Because you are eventually going to have to be able to open that back up and take this lid off to empty it out. The bottom board is just going to stay on here. Um, you know, don't, don't glue your top and bottom down to it. I guess you can glue your bottom if you wanted to, but do not glue your top lid down because it has to come back off. And I uh, just pulled out my bin of things I already have laying around. Got some good exterior galvanized decking screws. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to use some of these to attach the 2x4s with or if I'm going to use an air uh, stapler. And it just depends what I feel like. We'll see what happens. After thinking about uh, doing three boxes times screws in each of these and how much pre drilling I was going to have to do, I'm going to take the lazy way out, use the air stapler. Um, I use quarter inch crowns when I'm building frames and boxes, so that's what I'm going to use for these. These are what I use in my boxes. Um, I like grip right, really good quality. I'm using an inch and a half leg on this. And you'll see, even on the surface, it goes that deep, and you know it's going to countersink a little bit, so we're going to get really good penetration into the wood. That'll hold everything nice and tight while the wood glue sets up. Uh, the four side pieces are attached, and I decided I was going to go ahead and glue the bottom in solid. Uh, just to help water from uh, wiggling in and trying to rot the wood out. It's more of a water barrier than anything. But I'll go ahead and put screws in the corners, and I'll, uh, I'll probably use air staples and go ahead and shoot around the edges, because they're thin enough, I'm not going to split the wood if I'm careful. Just around, just you know, here and there, maybe a couple in the centers to keep it from wanting to bow, just to keep it down, that way uh, it stays nice and, and uh, flat while the glue dries up. So I finished putting the bottom on, I cleaned off uh, all the glue that squeezed out, flipped everything over, stuck some frames in just to show you the spacing. So as you can see the way we did it, you can get eight frames back inside of here. You still have plenty of room to, to push things around and get your frames out without squishing bees. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and make the other boxes, but this is essentially what we're building. You're going to have an empty void on both of these sides, so we'll have plenty of room to uh, Drill holes through and attach our piece on the back to hang it from the tree with. And we'll put in some entrances and vents and then I'll show you how that goes. Now in case you want to see, here's what a finished bottom looks like. So I went around the edges. I glued in between the layers and I put staples in to squeeze everything nice and tight while the glue dries. I went and put a pre-drilled and sunk a screw in to all four corners just to 
secured on really nice and tight. That's the whole entire bottom. As I'm putting the entrances and vents in these, I'm going to show you what I'm using. For the entrance, uh, using a one inch bit. There you go. Uh, one and a half inches is more ideal, but around here, one inch is all I have here, and I really don't want to dig out all my hole saws and fight with those contraptions, so I'm going to give up the half inch just because I don't want to mess with it. And on the back for the vents, what I do with all my vents, I use this type of a speedboard bit, and I'll show you why. Oh yeah, so the front entrance uh, lower towards the corner, out of the way. I think it's heavy when you put plywood on it. <clears throat> so any kind of vent tops or anything I ever make, I use one of these. The reason is, when you come in, you want to put your vents in at a severe angle. That way, if rain comes in this direction and hits, it's going to hit the hole and drain back out and not drain into the hive. This will keep you going in a straight line because as you angle it and start, the screw works its way in and it self-aligns and keeps it straight itself straight all the way through. And it drills really fast. And then after I do that, I come behind it and I put a piece of screen over this and staple it in to keep uh, you know other bugs and other bees and things from walking inside of them. But on mine, I'm putting a couple of vents on the far end. You don't want to give them too much airflow and too much light in a swarm trap. The way I'm doing it is they're going to have airflow coming here through the front. And as it moves across the brood, it'll be able to come up and then out these vents. So there'll be a nice draw of air that the bees will be able to sit on top of the frames. And they'll be able to pull air in and out as they, as they wish without letting in too much light. And uh, I'm, I'm going to finish putting these holes in the other ones and see if I can find my screen wire and uh, staple over some vent holes. Let's say you're going you're to cover your uh, screen vents. Take a little piece of just number eight like you use on your screen bottom boards and uh, cover the hole and put a little staple in each corner. Let's see from the outside. I've got these holes at an angle that are going to drain water out but nothing no bees or wasps or anything are going to get inside of them and just a couple of them on the back end ought to do it next is to cut the board that's going to be mounted on the side of our boxes to hang them from the trees uh, this is a one by six and I got a ten foot section or strip and I'm just going to section it into thirds so you know, 10 feet, 120 inches, so every 40 inches I have a mark. That way I, I can just use one whole stick for the three and not have any scrap laying around. And however much higher above the boxes it is, that's what it is. Right, now we have our pieces cut in the thirds. This is how we're going to attach our box to hang it from a tree. Um, essentially, I'll show you on this side. We're going to mount it to the center of the box. We're going to bolt through and uh, use washers and nuts to secure it. We're going to let it hang down past the bottom of the box some to help for stabilizing and if we need to shim. And we'll come up towards the top and we'll drill a hole into it so we can loop some chain through it to help hang it from a tree and get some surface area to strap. Now when we do it, keep in mind where your entrance is. We want to hang swarm traps on the north or your east sides of trees if possible to get some of the afternoon shade. We don't want these in the full sun all day long getting too hot. So when we put this piece on, find your entrance. And it's gonna be mounted on that side. That way, if we put it on the north side of a tree, the entrance will be pointing east. That way the wind won't blow right inside of it. And then if we put it on the east side, it'll be pointed towards the south. That way the, the western wind will hit the back side. And this is just because if we have a cooler night, we don't want cool breezes blowing up inside the boxes. Just like when we orient our hives outside, we usually face them in somewhere between um, the entrances facing east to south or somewhere in between. So this is all we're doing with the swarm trap. We're just making sure that when we mount it, we're facing the right direction that we want. And um, I don't know if I have the, the right bolts and things around here, so I'm gonna have to finish this tomorrow. Um, whenever I get back to it, I'll show you how to do that.
All right, it's a new day. Um, it's been a couple of days since I started this process. Um, it's been cooler here the last few days, so it's taken longer for paint to dry. So I had to have a, a night for the, the prime coat to dry and then never a night for the actual paint to dry. But I've got everything painted, painting the bottoms, painting the lids. I didn't worry about repainting this. Um, you paint this and the lids tend to stick harder because the paint's not fully cured. So I usually primer on them just to kind of help with the water a little bit. Um, that's what I did on the underside of the lids as well. Um, our hangers here, I went ahead and cut the ones I had basically in half from what I showed you previously. Um, it's been raining so much, it's really muddy and soft outside. I'm not going to be able to back my truck up to like, the trees like I wanted to and stand in the bed. So since I'm only going to take a ladder with me, I took this hive down a half. That way I wouldn't have to reach up so high to get these up in the air. Um, I came through, I mounted bolts to hang them. You can see fender washers. Um, I use a lot nylon locking nuts, but if you don't use those, use some type of a lock washer. Something to keep those bolts from coming loose. And fender washers on both sides to spread out the the force. That way you don't you don't have just a small area to where this weight's going to want to rip out. Those fender washers will help support everything and hold it in place. I uh, built some frames this morning and put some wax in some of them. Let me grab some and I'll show you uh, what I'm doing with them. Now we've grabbed the frames. Um, you're going to notice none of these are brand spanking new shiny clean frames. You want old frames. This here is the cleanest looking and it's already been in the hive before. You can see where I've cut some wax out of it. Um, so what I'm doing, you can put some drawn comb in here. I just put a frame. I wouldn't put a whole box. That's just asking for wax moths. Um, you can do completely foundationless. You can do foundation, whatever combination you want. If you do completely foundationless, you have to really level your box out so the wax is properly drawn. So what I'm doing to get around it, since I do small cell and foundationless, so I've gone and gotten old foundationless frames that I've cut out that have wax on them and propolis and residue and lots of good smells. And I'm alternating those with a small cell foundation. And the small cell that I put in them, these are old uh, frames that had an old standard size foundation in them that I cut out and melted down last fall. So these frames, I've got a real thin coat of wax all over them before I've dipped and boiled them to clean them out. They've got good bee smells, propolis smells. They're nice smelly used frames. And then they've got that nice fresh wax smell inside of them. So what I'm doing is alternating those. So all my empties have had wax residue on them and smells and bits and pieces of stuff. And all the foundation and the frames you know, are old and smelly too. Here's an old piece of some drawn out. It's not real dark. I just had it laying around so I threw it in. I think I've got some traps that don't have any in it just because I don't want to dig them out of a hive right now. But, you know, I've, I've just got a combination. So what this is going to allow me to do is to get some foundation, like, foundation looks like I like. Some small cell, the way I like to do it. And I don't have to get this hive perfectly level. Because most likely, they're going to start drawing out on the, uh, the foundation first, because it's just there. And even if they don't, since I have these alternated, foundation, emptying a foundation, they're going to end up drawing the foundationless in the right direction because they're bee spacing. They're not going to be able to go side to side and draw these across comb. Even if they do get outside a little bit, they'll have to stop and bring it back in. So this will allow me just to be able to hang them, eyeball everything level, and that's going to be good enough. So the next step is to make our, our queen pheromone, basically, our, our swarm bait. And then we're going to put the lids on and screw the lids down. So let me go grab the stuff to bait. Now it's time to set our uh, our bait out. Uh, you can buy a commercially available swarm lure, or you can just do what a lot of us do, is just buy uh, lemongrass oil. You want pure lemongrass oil. You don't want a synthetic, so you don't want the kind for aromatherapy. You want the actual, real kind, 100% pure essential oil. So what you're going to do is take one of these little half sheets of paper towels, Fold it in half, stick it in just a cheap old sandwich bag. It's just going to look like this. What I do is I, it's hard to do one-handed, but I'll open it up and in the center of the paper towel, I put about 10 drops of lemongrass oil inside of it. 
seal it up all except for one little corner just leave it barely open to help permeate the smell the smell will go through the plastic bag over time that's why these will last for months but i'm just i'm just going to leave mine out for a few months so i'm going to leave that little corner open to really get the smell going and if there's your entrance you put it at the far back of your hive on the very top of your frames and that smell will kind of fill the whole box out and scout bees will be able to smell it through these little back vents and any coming in that are going to look take a look at it are going to it's going to get them they have to go in and they're going to come all the way through the box to see what that smell is and that way they'll, they'll get a good view of the box and check out the volume of it and since we're using an idea volume size you know maybe we'll we'll look out and catch some so now after we we do that and leave this in we screw the lid on and we're ready to go hang them the lid's screwed on we'll come back and put some silicone or just some sealant over these to keep water from leaking in, down into them um i like to leave, leave a nice overhang on my front porch so the bees are checking it out if they need to get out here on the outside they can do that while it's raining outside a little overhang on the side to keep water at the seals a little overhang in the back to help keep water from getting down to the vents even though i have them angled down and it's flush on the back side for hanging and uh, that's it finish the rest of them and we'll go out and find some trees if you're concerned about drilling the hole in the right spot and show you a quick and easy way to do it so i just take a scrap or whatever i cut my block out of wherever it's a two by two or two by four all i do is i kind of eyeball you know that the inner wall stops here, so I just kind of eyeball it straight to there. Same way over here, stops right about there. I just put my finger on top, and I just slide it over, and there's my hole. I'm gonna hit the, almost near the center of wood every time. That's a quick way to do this, I'm to measure and draw lines and marks, and it's just a, real, a speedy way to do it. And we've got our first trap hung up. You see, it's soft and wet out here, so we couldn't drive the truck up to the tree. So, just basically got it up as high as I could reach, just by hand or with a little step ladder. Um, put your name on the side, your number on the side of it. So, the most important thing is getting it somewhat level. You see, when we get up here, put a little level out. It's fairly level end to end, side to side. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. We've got our chain hung up and connected. Um, I don't like to use the little S hooks as much, so I use those different those connectors with the little uh, locking ends on them. Just use whatever you want. Looped it through, put a strap around it, got it nice and tight, and then brought some scrap wood with us to make shims to get it somewhat level. Let's see, I'm six feet tall, so entrance is close to eight feet tall. If not. As ideal as 10 feet, but it'll work just because we couldn't reach up any higher. And here's that connection if I zoom in. See, I looped it around the tree and connected it, and then dropped it, and then looped it through a hole, and then came back up and connected it again. So that chain digging into the side of the bark in the tree will keep it from slipping, and the strap will keep everything tight to the tree. And uh, that's all there is to it. We're going to go do some more and uh, head out of here. We just hung the last trap. I just wanted to show you. This is a good example. This nice large straight tree. The reason why you mount these on the north or the east side, you can see the shade right now. It's about a quarter to three in the afternoon. And that box is actually pointed, it's actually mounted on the northeast side. So you can see if you put it on the north or the east, the way the shade is laying, it's going to keep it cooler in the afternoon. But in the morning, it's going to get a lot of sun. So if we were to mount this, on the west or south side it'd be in the full sun all day long so swarm traps you want them hot in the morning and cool off in the afternoon because there's not enough ventilation in them if you have a big swarm move in it could make them get too hot and want to take off on you again